Uh, in this short video, we're going to introduce a couple of new time leaf concepts that turn out to be very, very useful. Um, and the first is uh, using static resources like JavaScript and CSS files, how to include those in your templates. And then the second is going to be using template fragments to share sort of uh, common pieces of markup and code across different templates. Um, so template fragments are going to be similar to what we did in Jinja where we were able to include templates or extend templates rather um, using Jinja. So um, just again to have that analogy in the back of your head as far as uh, what this looks like. So the first, uh, first let's look, let's talk about template fragments first, okay? So here is, um, that's the new one actually. So this code, just, just as a note, uh, this code is all, uh, I'm not going to be live coding here, I have already this, this stuff all written out, and we're just going to kind of walk through it. Um, let's look at the hello form.html template. So here's the, the form that we ended up with at the end of our last walkthrough together. So we had just a short HTML file, um, it had a head with a title, it had a body, within that body there was a form with a button and an input, and it just looked like this without this message here. So we'll see where this message comes from um, in a moment, but the the start the code we started with, which I was just looking at up on GitHub, is this right here. As you can see, there's actually no, no uh, little copyright message in the footer there. We'll see how that's included in a second. This is the updated code. Um, okay, so that's what we started with. Now, I am going to show you how we got from there to here. Um, and something else that you can't quite see here is that we have uh, some, let me just show you the network tab in Chrome DevTools. We also see that our page is loading st a style sheet and a JavaScript file. So obviously that's not happening in the, the, the file we left with last time because the head doesn't contain any JavaScript or style sheet um, information, right? So we're going to show you how to do that as well. So this is the updated hello form template and it's doing um, it's it's including stuff that's new to us using the idea of a fragment okay so let's look at the footer first this might be the best example so in this template this template is being displayed right here um, this is the template's being displayed notice I have this copyright message at the footer and that does not appear in my template itself okay notice I just have a div and I have this new syntax to us it's th colon replace, and then it specifies some information there as well. What this basically says is replace this div with uh, a fragment named footer in the template.html file. Okay, so template.html is over here. Let's open that up and let's see what we're looking at. So this is sort of a, you can sort of think of this as a, uh, a template for a template or um, you know an outline for your template it's a place where you can put reusable components that you want to use in several of your templates um, and you don't have to call it template that just kind of seemed to make sense to me notice down here I have something called a, uh, a paragraph and I use the syntax th colon fragment equals footer this says I'm defining a new template fragment that I want you to call footer so I can refer to that template fragment in other templates by its name and I can include it that way as well. So by defining this fragment here in the template.html file and calling it footer, that allows me over here to then include it by using this syntax to tell it to replace the div with the elements in the template.html file that's called footer. Okay, so that's how that footer gets in there. And in my hello.html, this is the, the template that just displays the hello world message, or the hello name message. I'm also using that as well. So this shows you I can use that same content across multiple templates. And if I wanted to, you know, change this, say I had a copyright with a year on it or something um, like that, I could then change that and it would appear and it would be updated in all of my templates that are using that fragment um, because they're including it rather than just copying that, that code again and again and again. So that'll help you keep your code maintainable and more reusable. I'm also using... Um, a template fragment up at the head as well okay so you might use you know a template fragment for your entire head you might use it just for your script files or certain portions of your head but you you know it's it's pretty useful to do this so let's look at what this fragment looks like so again this this fragment is coming from the template.html file and the fragment named head 
All right, so in our template.html file, we see here's where our head fragment is uh, defined. Now, I happen to I just kind of notice this. I wish I would have chosen a different name. Uh, I happen to have named this head. Um, you don't have to. Um, you know, this name here does not have anything to do with this name, so I could probably name this header. That's probably a little bit better. And then I can change it in the files that are using it. Um, so just to make that clear that those don't have to be the same. So again, the, set, the syntax says, this element defines a new fragment that can be accessible to other templates. Within that, I have uh, just a set of common stuff you might see in the head of an HTML file. The first is a title, which we had before. Recall that this syntax will insert uh, the value of a parameter of an attribute named title into that element. And if there is no attribute named title, it'll just insert this default text, hello spring. Okay, so this will allow us to say set the title um, on a page by page basis, even though we're using some reusable code here, we can set the title and make it different for each page uh, just by setting an attribute called title within our controller file. So you would do that, for instance, you could, you know, over here, you could say do something like, you know, model dot add attribute title um, and this is the you know the response page so we can say hello spring response something like that and then that would then uh, render that title when you submitted the form let's just actually go ahead and test that out actually no I'm gonna have to restart my server to do that so let's not look at that right now we'll look at it at the end so this title will when calling this controller method it will set a custom title when calling this controller method it will just set the default title and that's because um, I've used this kind of default behavior here all right now the next that's how that's how fragments work so here I've had I have two fragments one to define the head and one to define the footer I'm using those in both the hello and uh, hello form templates uh, you can use those for anything you want. If you had a fragment that was, say, your navigation for the for your website that you wanted to be the same or very similar across all the different pages, or if you had other elements that you wanted to be similar, say a login form that you wanted to use in multiple places, you can use fragments for a lot of a lot of useful things, and you can put them in different files. Again, you don't have to name the file that contains fragments template that HTML. There can be more than one of them. You can have fragments in multiple places, but in general, this is how you define a fragment, and then this is how you use that fragment. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see. What are we going to talk about next? Oh, yes. So we're going to talk about including static resources. So it's likely that as you work on a project going forward, uh, you're going to want to use JavaScript and style sheets in your project. So here's an easy way to include all of those sheets across all of your templates. Again, we're, you know, here we're using a fragment. And so if I include anything I include in that fragment, it's going to appear wherever I use it. So in this case, I've used uh, the header fragment in both of my templates and say I want to include the same style sheets and CSS files in both of those templates I can just include those in the same place. Now you're going to need a special syntax in order for Spring to know where your style sheets and JavaScript files uh, live and where they come from how to, and how to put the full URL in there for you. So let's look at that here. So here you know normally you would have uh, your, your syntax for including a style sheet would be something like this. Um, Right? So that would be your normal syntax for including something. However, given the way the Spring Bit application works, this getting the right path here can be kind of tricky and easy to mess up. So it's better to use this tag syntax that uh, will dynamically create the path to your style sheets based on how the application is configured. And the same, the same will hold true for JavaScript. Notice that here I have th colon href that specifies the path to my CSS files. That's because when I when I normally specify CSS file, I use the href there. And notice that when I uh, set a JavaScript file, I have th colon source. That's because normally the the, uh, the the attribute for a script tag would be source equals you know something like this. Okay. So those are slightly different, just to notice that, that we have multiple variants of the th colon going on here, th colon text, th colon href, th colon source. Okay, 
Um, great. So this will, if we use this, this little syntax to say at, and then within brackets, um, this path, it will, Spring Boot will know where exactly those files are. So uh, we put those in our, over here in our source main resources folder. And I've created a folder here called static. This is uh, just a folder on the same level as templates. So to create it, you would go to source main resources, right click and say new folder and just type in static. Okay. And that's very specific. You, you need to call this static and it needs to be in this source main resources folder. Otherwise, the way Spring Boot is configured, it won't be able to find them. It, it depends on those resources being in that folder. So basically, this, this leading slash is saying that uh, it's considering the root of this path to be the static folder. So I have slash CSS slash styles.css. That means that I can, uh, that style, it will find the style sheet located right here within the CSS folder within static. And similarly within, for the scripts.js within the JS directory. Okay, so this will dynamically create uh, the correct path based on where those resources are located. So let's just go look at that and see in the page source that that's happening. Okay, so in this case, these happen to be at just the root, uh, the way the the way the server is set up. Um, but you could also, in some cases, depending on how your server was configured, you might have uh, some kind of path prepending that. All right, and that will allow Spring to correctly find those resources and serve them up for you. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. So I'm going to make this sample code available. I'll link it on the course webpage so you can use it just as a quick reference to how to break up your templates like this using fragments and how to include static content. Hope this helps.